Welcome to the Superhero of Love podcast. I am Bridget Fonger, and I wrote a book called Superhero of Love, Heal Your Broken Heart, and Then Go Save the World. My book is all about helping people love and be loved more than ever. I believe we all have a superhero of love inside of us. Yes, even you, superhero. And in this podcast, I talk to people who are all about helping us all tap into that superhero. May this episode make a difference for your heart. Let's get this party started. Welcome, superheroes. It is one week after Thanksgiving, and I just want to stop and take a moment to say how grateful I am for each and every person who is listening to my voice right now. I started this podcast in the spring of 2018 as a way to lead into my book launch, which happened January 2019. And if you haven't gotten my book, Superhero of Love, Heal Your Broken Heart, and then go save the world, please go get it. Go buy millions of copies for for your friends for Christmas. It's not just for people who have had a breakup. We all have pieces of our hearts that need to be healed. And um, I actually just referred to my own book just now to manage something. And what am I managing today? I'm managing all the pictures of what I believe my life should look like in terms of the book and everything related to the book as of right now at the end of its first year on this planet Earth. And I had a lot of expectations of where the book sales would be, where all kind, everything related to the book would be right now, and the pictures are not matching reality. And so I've been judging myself a lot. I've been doing a lot of stuff, but I didn't get one of the things that I really wanted to get um, on the calendar this year was another Love Forward Talks as a follow-up to our wildly successful very first Love Forward Talks, which happened on 11-11 in 2018. It was such a great event, and we all wanted another Love Forward Talks to happen this year in 2019, and that didn't happen. So... I've been beating myself up about that a bit. I've just been generally beating myself up. And so I went to my book to do a little heart healing. And I found this excerpt that I'm going to read because I just read it to myself. But it's (laughs) honestly, I need to read it again. And it mentions um, somebody that I'm going to have on the podcast. Probably it will it will air in January, I'm guessing. And also, I'm just going to make an announcement now, which is that I've decided to to make this my last podcast of 2019, and I'll come back fresh with in 2020. I'm going to be recording a few interviews over the next few weeks, but I'm going to give myself a break to recalibrate, reassess, and get back to the divine so that I can hear the clear messages that I know I am meant to hear about where I should go next with everything related to the book and Love Forward Talks and all my passions around this superhero of love world. So it's not that I haven't been active and and having fun with the book and everything related to the book this year, but it's time for me to stop, reassess, and listen. So Appropriately enough, I'm going to be reading from the part of the book which is on one of the five super powers, which is super alignment. So here we go. One full moon after a particularly exhausting work week, I was chanting and meditating in front of my outdoor fire pit. The fire was powerful, the flames dancing in a most playful way. I watched the fire until it had nearly died out. When I woke up the next day, I felt as if my internal fuel tank had been completely filled. I was peaceful and yet full of energy. I went out to do my morning meditation near the fire pit. As soon as I sat down, a hummingbird came to dance around my head. It sat on a tree branch right above me and chirped. I didn't even know that hummingbirds could chirp, (laughs) letting me know it was there and yet staying far enough away so so as not to distract. When I was done with the meditation, it flew circles around me to let me know it was still with me. When you enjoy super alignment, magical things like this happen with more and more regularity. I remain in awe of these signs and little synchronicities while I also now take responsibility for being the energy that draws them toward me. 
One state of being can draw love, compassion, and empathy toward us and push anger, resentment, and judgment away. I wondered how many mornings that little hummingbird had been fluttering around me before I even noticed it. Later that same day, I saw a sign for a moving sale. I was going to be late for an appointment and didn't have much time, but I wanted to see if there was anything of interest I could snag at a bargain price. I walked in, and right at the entrance was a shelf that I had been imagining for the sliver of real estate right next to my desk. In that exact wood color, height, and width I had pictured and had the number of shelves I needed, I had thought only days prior, well, the only thing that could fit there would be dot, 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 and there it was. Then I got a little cocky. I said to myself, well, the only other thing I need is lounge chairs for the garden so I can sit and write comfortably on my laptop or recline to have a nice relaxing nap. As I paid for the shelf, the woman asked, hey, would you be interested in those garden chairs? She pointed off in the distance to two beautiful vintage metal chairs. I had seen them when I just first arrived, but didn't give them even a fleeting thought because they were far too cool to be for sale and were in an area that was marked as off limits. Honestly, God? Instant manifestation? How can this be? I sat down in one and pushed back. Yes, they reclined. I couldn't believe how perfect they would be for both working and lounging in my garden. I asked how much they were, expecting them to be a lot. They were a, de a steal, a garden-filling, writing-enhancing bargain. This is how miracles happen when you enjoy super alignment. Prayer is another way to get super aligned. I've meditated for a long time, but I had always had a bit of an odd relationship with prayer. I thought it was something religious people did, and it sounded somehow selfish and less democratic to those of us who were not religious folks. Do people who know how to pray get dibs on God's blessings? Then the breakup with Mr. X led me to a very powerful relationship with prayer. My friend Sally Redfield recommended the prayer of St. Teresa to ease the fire in my heart. I soon understood exactly why she suggested it. It felt like a prescription, both in its delivery and its receipt. It was a true salve. I printed it up on a little piece of paper that I kept with me at the beginning of my journey. I also kept a copy next to my bed and read it first thing in the morning and last thing at night when I was in the throes of heart pain. May today there be peace within. May I trust God that I am exactly where I am meant to be. May I not forget the infinite possibilities that are born of faith. May I use these gifts that I have received and pass on the love that has been given to me. May I be content knowing I am a child of God. Let this presence settle into my bones and allow my soul the freedom to sing, dance, praise, and love. It is there for each and every one of us. This single prayer changed my relationship with prayer forever. I finally understood why so many people found comfort in it. Reading those lines made me feel immediately nurtured. Praying now feels like a direct line to God. It puts my heart in some sort of good and right order, focused on something bit far bigger than myself. I am humbled and connected to the, my own little divining rod. Desperate times call for desperate measures. At the beginning of this process, I put affirmations all over my house and reminded me of a few truths and to help me stay in super alignment. Everywhere I looked, I saw them. They were constant reminders of the truth. They helped me remember who I was underneath the pain when I needed a reminder. I did this for the first fiery weeks, and then one day I knew I didn't need them anymore, and I took them all down. I knew that I had internalized them, that I had taken them in on a cellular level. There was one in particular that I'd received from Kathy, my very first love leaguer, when I put put up all that I put up which I put up all over the house. It made a big difference at the beginning to keep me in super alignment, and it was this. I planned it just like this. Those six little words, oh so powerful. So um, I could continue, but the mantra, I'm going to skip just down to the mantra for, there's a mantra for every superpower in the book, the five superpowers. And the mantra for this one for super alignment is, 
My life supports my connection to the divine. So I'm going to take a few weeks off to support my connection to the divine. I'm going to, hopefully in these next few weeks, but definitely before the end of January, I'm sure we will have an interview with Sally Redfield. Sally Redfield is the husband of James Redfield, who, if you haven't heard the the interview with him, James Redfield, who wrote The Celestine Prophecy, which was a life-changing book for me in the 90s. Sally is his incredible wife um, who is so talented, a writer herself, and just a giant heart on this planet. She is a major superhero of love, and as you heard, she was one of my love leaguers. That prayer, that St. Prayer of St. Teresa really um, transformed me, and just listening to it now, it brought tears to my eyes because it's just so pure and so beautiful and so loving. When everything is so crazy and so intense around the holidays, we're just trying to We're trying to work, we're trying to please our friends, we're trying to celebrate, we're trying to relax, we're trying to do, do, do. And there's so much pressure in in taking off these few weeks from the podcast. I'm, I'm taking something off my plate and I encourage you to look at your plate. Is it overly full? Is there something you need to take off your plate? Is there a different direction that you want to turn your attention. And for me, I definitely want to turn my attention to celebration for sure, because that really fills my heart up celebrating with friends and, and just sharing love with friends and family. But I also want to turn my attention inward and become more quiet so that I can start the new year in a powerful way. So that's the choice I'm making. Um, but I won't not be doing anything for this podcast. As I said, I'm going to be interviewing people. So we have some great interviews that are going to be going up in January, which will be great. And being a little superhero of love elf in whatever way I can. So thank you, thank you, thank you for a second year of Uh, being with me for the Superhero of Love podcast and if you're just joining the podcast now uh, thanks for coming and I hope you'll go back and look at some of the old interviews and rate and review us and tell your friends about it and definitely please tell people about the the book Superhero of Love I'm getting some great emails and and notes from people about the book um, helping their hearts so there may be somebody in your life that might use a little extra love in their heart this holiday season and beyond and I wish you the happiest and most love-filled holidays thanks for coming superhero